seven truths about marriage. Since now we know that marriage is orchestrated by God, is ordained by God, it's God that instituted marriage. There are reality, there are truth, there are mysteries about marriage. So it is necessary that we understand this truth. So I'm going to reveal this truth to you this blessed afternoon. Called the seven truth about marriage. There are things believers, especially believers, children of God, need to know about marriage. Because many people are going through challenges in marriage because they, they don't understand what marriage is all about. Before they enter, they have not begin to they have not understand the reality about marriage. So many jumped in. When they jumped in, they found something unusual that is shocking them, pulling them out. Because they didn't know what marriage is all about. So this blessed afternoon, I want to give you the truth about marriage. And if you are writing, I want you to listen attentively and put them down. Praise God. Number one, we have to understand this, that marriage is a mystical union where two flesh become one. Number one, marriage is a mystical union where two flesh become one. We got to understand this, when two flesh become one, there is no room for division. Because when two become one, there is no space by which you can divide them anymore. So the Bible says it's a mystery. Paul said, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and he shall join to his wife. They shall become one flesh. He said, this is a mystery. How can two become one? How can two become one? The Paul said, it's a mystery. That means he said, it's a reality. That is what Adam said initially. He said, therefore a man shall leave his father, leave his mother, join unto his wife, they shall become one flesh. So we have to understand this truth and reality about marriage, that when we come together, we are no longer two, but one. So therefore there is no room for division. Therefore there is no room for personal opinion, personal idea, personal agenda. Everything has to be exposed to each other. Because this time around, you are no longer two but one. As an individual, can you hide a secret for yourself? No. So that is what the Bible says. It's a mystery. Two has become one. Therefore, no secrets. So we have to understand this reality about marriage. We have to know this truth. That as I'm coming into this divine union, because marriage is spiritual, I have to know that when I come in contact with my wife, I'm no longer two partners, but one. So everything concerning me has to be open. Everything concerning her has to be open. And beside that, there is no room for breakup. Hello? Hello? So sometimes when we are devoid of this, of this truth, of this reality, after we've come into marriage, we begin to experience some challenges. Jesus said before a man should build, let, it, let him count what the cost. So we have to understand this truth. That when I get married to a man or a woman, I have joined with that person. There is no room for division. No personal plan. No personal projects. No secrets. Everything has to be what? Opened. So this is the number one truth. We have to understand this. It's the number one truth. Paul said they became one. He said it's a mystery. So no place for division. No place for two opinions. No place for two visions. The man has the vision. The woman has the vision. No, 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 no. The family now has to run one vision. One vision. So we have to understand this. Because marriage is unique before God. Marriage is an important thing before God. That is what the Bible says. It says marriage is honorable among all. Every other thing, marriage has to take preeminence. It has to come before every other thing. So we have to understand this number one reality. That marriage is a mystical union. 
Where two flesh become one and there is no room for division. Number two, write this down. Marriage is an institute of goodness and favor. Number two, marriage is an institute for goodness and favor. Somebody say favor. Somebody say goodness. Hallelujah. Marriage is sweet. Tell your neighbor, say marriage is sweet. Say there is goodness in marriage. Say there is favor in marriage. Now the Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22. It tells us that when a man finds a wife, he finds what? Good thing. And what? Obtain favor from the Lord. If a man finds a wife, he finds good thing. This tells you that women are embodiment of goodness. If we don't understand this, when we come into marriage, we begin to look for help aside. We begin to look for somebody to help us. Why we are staying with a goodness in our home? Are, are you getting something like that? He said, he that found a wife, find what? Good thing, not calamity. Not problem. Woman is not problem. Because the scripture cannot be broken. He said, he that find the wife, find what? Good thing. There is a problem when we don't understand this reality. Therefore, we see that good thing as bad thing. Maybe because of one shaking or one circumstance. He said, then, when the man found good thing, the next thing, he obtained favor. There are special favor which God reserves. Not until you get married. There are special favor. He didn't bless Adam until Adam joined together with Eve. He gave Adam an assignment in the garden to begin to walk. No blessing. It was after the journey that the Bible said in Genesis 1.28. It said, and God blessed them. And said to them, be fruitful and multiply. He says, subdue the head and feed the head. He says, have dominion over the beds of the head, the fish in the sea, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Until they came together. So there are special favor. So when you are married, you are blessed. I say, when you are married, you are what? You are blessed. So we have to understand this truth. See, when we understand this truth, couples don't need to fight over things. When you know that the woman in your home is goodness, and you know that the day you married her, God has given you favor, you won't chase her heart. Because when you chase her heart, you chase her goodness. Hello? So we have to understand this truth about marriage and begin to work with it. Many of us who don't understand it find problem in marriage. How can the Bible say he that find a wife find good and obtain favor from the Lord and you say since I married I have never never achieved anything. It's a lie. It's because you don't understand the reality and the truth about marriage. Because if you understand it you begin to confess that scripture in your life every time. Lord, you said, if I find a wife, I find good thing. Let the good thing begin to manifest. And it will manifest. Number three. Number three. Marriage is an establishment that needs commitments. Marriage is an establishment that needs commitments. Somebody say commitments. This is where many couples have problems. Commitment is one of the foundational key to successful marriage. Commitment is that cement that bond two couples together. It is the continuity of sacrifice in marriage. How loyal are you to your husband? How much love do you show to your wife? How submissive are you to that man? How dedicated you are to the marriage? 
How devotional you are to the marriage. Do you show faithfulness in that marriage? Is there fidelity in that marriage? All these are commitments. 